Our time here in the garden in Belgium is shortening. The first signs of autumn make their appearance. But before we leave this place, I want to tell something about our greenhouse. Many people have asked us how it's built up. So this video is about my favorite spot on this place. The atmosphere is warm, earthly, alive. The faces in the walls presenting personality and character. Many hours of careful and meditative plastering went into finishing the walls. But the process was lovely. It feels empowering to build with your own hands, with things like wood, mud and straw. For us, it was the first time we did a straw bill building and the greenhouse was the right fit for the experiment. Before we started, we read about the different techniques and possibilities in this book, Building with Straw Bales from Barbara Jones, and researched the information that was available online. Then we started in springtime with three people, Jonas, Merel and me. Next step was to gather materials. Many things we found for free, like gravel, stones, pellet wood and the right earth. A farmer delivered us 200 straw bales with his tractor. Total cost of the materials altogether, around 1000 euros. Before we could start, we had to break down this plastic hoop tunnel greenhouse. The plastic was ripping apart after two years because the cats had made holes with their claws. This wasn't really a very durable solution for us. We first cleared the space and started on a gravel backstrip foundation that was going to support the walls and windows. The big sized bags were heavy and we had to fill them in place to not have to carry them. We did two rows on top of each other because the straw bales needed to get off the ground quite a bit. On the gravel bags we put a timber ladder. After reading about the load bearing technique in the book we would give it a go. Even though it felt really strange if that would really work and it felt like the walls could just tumble over. Load bearing means that the straw bales themselves are holding the weight of the roof instead of a wooden structure that supports it. In this way you can avoid expensive timber and extra energy. In our case the front part of the greenhouse rested on timber beams and the backside and middle on straw bale walls. Make it, making it a mix of two approaches. The bales are attached to the timber plate with poles and in between you hammer poles through the bales to give the wall strength. We used all kinds of poles that we had laying around but best is to use hazel which has the best qualities for this purpose. Nevertheless the high wall felt really wobbly before the roof went on and compressed the bales down. This building served many purposes. It has been used as our living room, kitchen in the winter time, atelier for print making and shower place with compost toilet. The walls needed to settle first, so we waited a couple of weeks and then started the process of plastering. 
This was much fun. The earth we got was already in a fine mix between clay and sand. We added water and fiber, in this case straw for the first layer and cattail fluff for the second layer. To make it stronger we added a bit of lime in every mix. I will put a link in the description on how to make art plaster below. The plaster makes it look a very tactile building, making it come alive. Our walls aren't finished straight, but if you want to, that is totally possible. And there is plenty of possibility with earth plaster to add your own accents and creative touches. So why did we choose straw bales? The straw bales provide a really good insulation to the north side of the greenhouse, providing a higher temperature inside on colder days. The straw bales and the earth plaster together serve as thermal mass. They soak up the warmth from the sun during the day and radiating that warmth out in the evening. In this way it extends the growing season. Another thing is that the earth plaster helps regulate dampness inside the building, taking up if there is plenty and giving off when it's drier. It's a braiding building in that way and helps bring a healthy indoor environment. On the outside we made a calculation mistake for our roof, making it too short to overhang. You want a proper roof overhang with straw bales so the rain cannot get to them. We used this pallet with the roof tiles on top to give the walls more protection. Now we are one and a half year further in time and the greenhouse has withstand some severe storms coming through. Although we must admit we were worrying about it, when trees fell down and roofs were blown away close by. One of the windows we used on the roof broke. For the rest we hadn't any we haven't had any problems. Glass windows are probably not your best option on the roof because of their fragility and heavy weight. It's possible to cover the ugly plastic gravel bags with stones or roof tiles to make it look more finished. Especially the shower place is my favorite. The sun warms the stones during the day and when the afternoon sun shines through the yellow glazed windows, the atmosphere is beautiful. The perennial Perian porcelain feels really at home here and has been exploding this year even though we regularly harvest its edible crunchy leaves.
the future we hope to take the insights from this project and apply it to a greenhouse small house combination building that can bring us additional comfort and warmth in a Nordic climate. I hope this was helpful to you and you get some ideas out of it. I wish you luck with your building projects and endeavors. Subscribe our channel if you like what you see, so we can share more with you. See you next time!